Most landscapes are characterized by a mixture of shady and sunny locations. And for our turf, this means we have a mixture of sun-loving turf grasses and those that thrive in the shade. For example, here we have Bermuda, and then in the shady areas, a tall fescue. And the result is kind of a patchwork of grass in our lawns, and these two grasses have very different maintenance requirements. Well, today we're going to visit a research site here at OSU looking at shade tolerant Bermuda that could solve problems like this in the landscape. Joining us is Dr. Greg Bell at his research plots in Stillwater. Greg, give us a little overview of your shade study here. Well, this is actually the second phase of this study. We started the, this research back in 2007. And at that time, we had four standards and 45 fixations that came from, mostly from China, but some of them came from Australia and Africa. Um, so we put them in this shade study underneath this canopy where we can apply uh, shade using this 75% shade cloth. And then we've got uh, afternoon shade from these pine trees uh, on the west side, especially in the evening. And we've planted some trees across this way and some out front to help with the shade as well. So hopefully, eventually we'll get this into the, to the point where we can have nothing except vegetation shade and we don't have to use the shade cloth anymore. That would be more of a natural situation you'd find in the landscape. And there is, yeah, and there is a difference between vegetation shade and you know, a neutral shade cloth like that. Okay. You get more of a filtered light through the trees. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So from your original 45 accessions, you then selected what the, the best of the best out of that, right? Exactly. We selected the ones that were most shade tolerant and the ones that looked the best mm -hmm. in shade. And we compared those with four very strong commercial varieties, which are actually uh, clonal types rather than seeded types. So what we were using were common Bermuda grasses because we want a seeded variety. But these clonal types tend to be uh, a lot finer texture and tend, tend to give you a little bit better grass most of the time. So we were comparing ours, um, kind of worst case scenario. We've given them the hardest comparison we possibly could. And by clonal, just for our viewers, those are the types that you would either put in by sod or through plugging, right? You have to either put them in by sod, plugging, mm -hmm. or sprigging. Okay. Yeah. So they have to come from a sod grower. Okay. You can't, they don't come from seed. So here we're in your heavy shade plot, um, and is this the select, you've actually taken those 10 best and crossed those to develop even better cultivars, right? Right, mm -hmm. we took the 10 best out of the previous study, we crossed them, and we developed three new cultivars. Uh, of course, they're experimental varieties, so they don't have a name and they're not <laughs> commercially available, right. but they're here in this study, and they're also in the National Turfgrass Evaluation Program studies, mm -hmm. which are done at re universities throughout the country. So we're hoping that they will perform well in those uh, studies. But what we're trying to do here is find out how well they perform in shade. You know, they won't see shade in the national studies. Right. Uh, and this site actually has different levels of shade. We're in the heavy shade that you described. Right. You also have these same grasses out in the full sun and then about a 50% shade um, environment as well. What are some of the characteristics you're looking for in these different grasses as you evaluate them? Well, first of all, we, this, the original accessions were screened for their ability to produce seed because anyone who wants to, to commercialize a variety has to have enough seed production in mm -hmm. order to make it worth their while to produce the seeded cultivar. Okay, so that's the first thing that has to happen. Second, we're trying to get, as our breeding program has always been about cold tolerance, so we want to get cold tolerant varieties as well. Okay. And third, now we're trying to add a shade component to that. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping that we get all three of those uh, <laughs> characteristics in one grass. We want a lot from our plants, don't we? <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, and they have to look good too. <laughs> so what oh, are yeah. some of the visual characteristics you're looking at from that appearance side, the looking good? The most popular popular characteristics for Bermuda grass or any other grass are fine texture, okay. dark green color, and a type of grass that grows dense. Okay. Mm -hmm. So 
most people are looking for density and color. And that's how they define how well a grass looks. And density is one of the issues when you bring the grass into the shade. Absolutely. I, I have some sprigs from this turf, um, mm -hmm. but then I pulled one from the sun as well. And describe some of the differences we're seeing here. It's pretty easy to tell which one's from the sun and which one's from the shade if you know what you're looking at. This grass came out of full sun. Mm -hmm. It grows much shorter internodes. Uh, it grows more dense. It has more branching. This particular grass, because it's in shade, is trying to grow upright, mm -hmm. just like a tree does. Yeah. If you put the tree in shade, it grows upright and it doesn't grow very big in caliper. It's trying to reach the sun. It's trying to reach the sun, exactly. Mm -hmm. It tries to outcompete its neighbors. So that's what this turf grass is doing. And because of that, you lose a lot of your root system. Oh. It, can, it only has so much energy. So it puts the energy into growing upright mm -hmm. instead of growing roots. Therefore, it takes more water and it doesn't take as many nutrients, mm -hmm. generally. With the plants growing taller like this, I assume your maintenance is a little bit different when you're working with a shade tolerant variety. Oh, absolutely. In fact, the reason that these are mowed at two inches is because we don't think that they would ever be able to take golf course height and shade. If we mowed these at a half an inch, you know, that would remove all of this mm -hmm. photosynthetic okay. material. Very little. So obviously know. there wouldn't be much uh, plant left to, to take in sunlight. So for anybody who's growing turf in shade, the best way to do it is to make sure you mow it high. And that's what a lot of people have trouble with. They want to, they've got their tall fescue in the shade, mm -hmm. they've got their manure grass in the full sun, and they don't want to change the mowing height, <laughs> so they, they mow, typically they mow the tall fescue a little too short, and it's difficult for it to survive yeah. in shade to begin with, let alone you know, after it's mowed short. And so for this study, you're also mowing the full sun at that two inch height just to be able to compare. Yeah, we want to be able to compare the two. So we're looking at a lawn scenario or a golf course rough scenario. Okay, so this is something hopefully someday uh, homeowners might have available to them so we don't have to have that patchiness in our landscape. <laughs> well, I got a big tree in my front yard and I would love to put some of this stuff. <laughs> we have to wait until it's developed. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Greg. I really appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome.